Hi everyone, your success with our assignments depends to a great degree on um, how well you've been able to digest the reading material. In case you're still waiting for your books, you might try the local library and also notice that there are a few pages from the Edwards text available in the e-chapters link on the navigation bar. Um, the first portion of this week's reading from Edwards might seem a little obtuse. She's asking you to mm, complete uh, an exercise or two other than what are called for in our course, I would like you to at least read through all she has to say. There are important notes there. The great thing about both of these authors is they will build your confidence by making drawing um, more accessible, more understandable. They'll empower you to feel as though, yes, you can do this wherever it happens you are at the moment with your drawing experience. Remember, a portion of this assignment is to create a value scale from black is black to pale is white. You could do that on the periphery of your page the way Matthew's done. Here I've got another idea that I'd like to present using your value scale as a sort of tool that assists you in detecting what values you see in your subject. So, say you made a value scale on stiff paper like cardstock. You could punch holes in it with a hole punch and then hold that up to your subject, squinting, peer through a hole and try to judge whether that gray is the gray you need for this subject or this area of the subject that you're spying through the hole. Christina, this is a fine drawing of a stick of bamboo leaves sprouting from one end. Let's take a look at the vase. I want to refer you to Dorena and what he has to say about drawing cylinders. This form is generally cylindrical. Um, one idea he presents is using a vertical axis to help you align the two sides and make sure one is the mirror of the other. So that would be something like a north-south pole, if you will, through the center of the vase. Another idea is to rough this out on scrap paper first. In other words, um, draw the vase as large as you'll need it to be for your final drawing. Uh, concentrate on one half of it. Fold your page, bring it to a large window that will act as a light table, and trace the second half from the first. Open the page up and place that rough drawing underneath the page for your final drawing, and then transfer the shape for the form of the face by tracing. Now, something Christina and Matthew Dolan can do is suggest the surroundings for the subjects, right? The subjects are going to cast shadows on the ground they sit on. This is an important matter with drawing to make the uh, subject seem as though it belongs in an environment. Now, Matthew has said that he's trying to make the leaves look waxy, and I think he's starting to get that um, on that leaf that's sort of uh, on the right side in the middle. Here, I'd say, your drawing tool needs to be sharpened, so it appears that this drawing's in charcoal. You can take your vine charcoal stick and sharpen it on sandpaper. Sharpen it to a diagonal, a long diagonal. Usually uh, works nicely to keep it pointy for a while. One problem with charcoal is that it's hard to use it successfully on a small scale. Charcoal tends to work better on a large page. Always begin charcoal with vine and later add um, compressed uh, charcoal such as the compressed charcoal stick which might be called charcoal, that's the name brand, or you might have charcoal pencils. These also are compressed charcoal. Black conte can be used too. Um, all of these materials can be sharpened to a fine point. The compressed charcoals, including the charcoal pencil, will not be erasable. When I look at Matthew's drawing and Adam's, I'm just a little concerned because I'm wondering whether these subjects might be prone to wilting. You want to be sure that whatever you choose for your still life is going to be there for you to continue your drawing with later on. So um, if you do have a flower, for example, be sure that that's in water. And George O'Keefe 
wouldn't do anything when she was creating a painting of a flower. She wouldn't accept invitations to dinner. She would continue painting until her painting was done, knowing that the life of the flower's bloom was very short. So, Adam, I noticed that one of your classmates suggested that you might try um, adjusting the direction of your strokes uh, so that they follow the form of your flower. I actually feel as though you're doing that to an extent already. This appears to be a tulip. One thing that I'm not certain about is the arrangement of the petals on the far side. They don't seem to be placed the way I would expect them to be. You know, uh, one matter that uh, everybody's exploring this week is drawing with an authoritative approach, which is my way of talking about Dorena's idea of drawing with your arm versus with your wrist. Um, you're going to have a surer stroke if you get in the habit of drawing from your shoulder or at least from your elbow. Make sure that your drawing setup is such that you can feel as though you've got elbow room, um, that your paper is in a fixed place. It's not wobbling around on you. It's not shifting when you're trying to draw. Um, you want to have uh, uh, control over the situation and also view drawing as being like an athletic activity. Lisa, I'm glad to see that you're applying value not only to your subject but on the ground on which it sits in the manner of a cast shadow. Um, for everyone, notice how the latter portions of this week's readings talk about shadow a great deal. I'd like you to pay special attention to that and also pay attention to the way you illuminate the subject from which you draw. Um, while I appreciate your cast shadow, Lisa, I'm, I'm not sure that you've observed it as carefully as you might. I'm not convinced that this is the shape or the direction the shadow would fall in. So beware of doing things by rote. Beware of um, putting shadow in as a habit or letting it simply be a halo around one side of the form. Look closely and analyze what it is your eyes are seeing. How lovely this particular shell is with its uh, various spikes and the whorl in the center. Melissa has drawn a shell here too. I think uh, each of you can gain something by looking at what the other has done. I like the directional lines Melissa is using on the point and how those um, lines similarly go in a very different direction in the lower part of the shell. Melissa, I believe that a shell similar to this was drawn as a sort of demonstration by Dorena and he shows how uh, such a shell can be comprised of two mm, triangular or conical shapes. I'd like you to take a look there. Also, be aware that while the interior of the shell may be white, it might not be light in value. That is, mm, if you take a white t-shirt and throw it on the bed in a room, turn off the lights, it's nighttime. The white t-shirt doesn't look white any longer, does it? So beware, things that you may know to be white in color don't necessarily look white in a value drawing. So Mike, it seems as though your flower is one that's already expired. It's not in the process of dying, but dead. And thereby, it's one that you don't have to worry about keeping in water. Uh, this is a lovely drawing. Um, so beautiful. One thing you need to work on is managing your photo in Photoshop and perhaps also ensuring that your drawing paper stays flat and neat. Um, so in Photoshop, I converted your image to grayscale and I did that for others here too. I also adjusted levels and brightness and contrast. All of this is described in the tutorial that I link you to.